So I'd like to do a little uh, demonstration here in a second. So symbol relations, generally this area, and a big reason why we start is there's a lot of different uh, things that this will help with, right? And the biggest um, example that, that I like to look at is as we look through, I won't read through all of these, they're, they're on your screen there, um, is how can this help? How can this tool that we are so conditioned to know that this means time actually help with our understanding and processing of the world. Okay, so when we're looking at a clock, we're very conditioned, typically from the kindergarten age, to know that this means time, right? Like when's recess, when's lunch, when's recess, when can I go home? And then for me, it's like, when's gym class, when's art, when are these fun things that I can associate to this clock? And then it builds into all, okay, I've got to get up at seven o'clock to be able to take a shower, have breakfast, to be able to get to school for 8.15, from 8.15, and you start to build around what this means. It's just a circle with lines and numbers, right? Our brain puts structure and meaning to this. And it typically does that through the organization from the right to the left hemisphere. What I, How I like to explain this on a, a little bit of a deeper level, is our right brain reads more people information, people understands emotion, understands what's happening in social situations, empathy, um, the typically associated with music and art. That's more reading the, the circles and the lines here. Whereas our left brain organizes details, numbers, prioritization, um, finding the main idea and things, putting a lot of information together to decide what's, what's appropriate. Um, that's more reading the numbers here. So as our right and our left brain communicate in reading this tool, we're using both hemispheres, they're lighting up, they're creating a, a connection across to really build that direct flight from one side of the brain to the other, all right? So this is our, our platform. There's a lot of activities that students can engage in at any time. Um, and I will hop into clock. So as students log in, they can see data, they can understand how they're doing, they can understand what they've been working on. Um, they can see how many hours within the week they've been working. This is my demo account that I use. So I'm kind of at the reds here. Some days I'm doing more, other days I'm doing less, but as a student, I can see how much more do I need to engage? How many more hours do I need to put in? And am I meeting my goals? So as they go in, it would give more information. And now I'm looking at this clock. So I, I'm on a two-handed level here, right? As I'm going through, my goal would be to go at a speed at a certain percentage to be able to build mastery, okay? And what I'm doing in that sense is typing in the time. So six, nine, four, five, eight, six, nine, two, ten. 29, I'll get one wrong here, 2, 12. Okay, so I got one wrong. It lets me know that, okay, I've got to fix it. I'm going back in. Okay, oh, I see what I did wrong. It's actually 2, 11, and now I keep going through. We don't want to get hung up on wrong things. The, the need for control is often um, there for students uh, with challenges too, uh, to prove that they know what they're doing. We can get hung up on that. Perfectionism can come out on that. We do want to try to get over that within this. The whole point of this is for me not to have to put thought to this task. If we're learning how to ride a bike and we, if we look back to when we started riding a bike or driving a car, right? There's a lot of things that we need to organize at once, right? Before you know it, you're riding with your hands off of your steering, right? You got you're doing wheelies, you're jumping off curbs. But when you started, you were on your training wheels and you were trying to figure out how to steer and how to pedal at the same time. Your brain's putting so much cognition to that task. To a few years later, you're you're riding your bike to the store to get a slurpee with your friends. You're in deep conversations, right? You're not putting thought to that same task. That's the goal we're trying to aim for here, where I'm just typing the time in and I'm not worried about um, what the actual time on the clock is, I'm just going through and trying to get faster and faster to the point where, okay, I've proven that I can get to the level that I want to get to. Um, and now I need it to be more complicated. So then we'll add hands. So now I have a second hand here. And I'll, you'll notice that the it's, it's harder to tell on this one because it's only nine seconds after. 
the minute hand's no longer pointing right to the 41 on this. It's on its way to 42, but not quite there. And I need to understand the relationship of this clock almost as fast as I was understanding the relationship with the two hand. And even speaking at the same time, for me, brings in a whole new element, right? Because my focus isn't right on it. So, okay, I've got to get my focus back. Okay, it's actually 341, nine, 10. And I was this two or three. So this is the process that my brain is starting to process. Because when I was on two-handed clocks, I know that this is going to be pointing right at a number here. But now it's not. So the novelty of adding in that hand, which is just like training wheels are off. Now I need to balance, right? Uh, now I'm, I'm learning how to go from an automatic transmission to now I need to, to learn the clutch. I need to learn where my hand goes, where my feet go, right? There's more to come into it to really make it more complicated. So I'm like, okay, no, it's not three, it's two, but in 13 seconds, it's gonna be three. So that would be 47. So I'm going through this process in a different way, even though it's it, only one more hand. Hey, Josh, can I talk about the networks just quickly? Yeah, sure, go ahead. So what Josh, when you have this analog clock, the three-handed clock, these large scale brain networks that I talked to you about that connect different regions of the brain are activated. So one of the first networks that you need is you need to pay attention uh, on a task and that's the default mode network has to be activated to show a focus on a specific objective. So that default network in your brain is engaged. And then you need to know what do I need to look at, which is sort of what's important to know, which is the saliency network. So another network gets connected and activated. And so the saliency network gets connected with, oh, what do I need to figure out here? What's important to know? And it's just like in reading, when you're reading a book, your brain first has to connect to the reading materials, the default mode network, then it has to engage in what's important to know. And then if eventually it gets to a point where Josh has to act on a, a decision, uh, which is another network of the human brain. So Josh has to make a decision. So all these large scale brain networks, like four of the most major large scale brain networks are engaged during this activity, which begin to strengthen in connectivity with the more repetition you make. And this makes the brain, uh, uh, more effective in most learning processes, whether it's reading comprehension, math problem solving, learning science. And when I first came across this exercise, visiting Toronto in 2004, over almost two decades ago, I said to Barbara, what does the clocks exercise do? Which, well, reading comprehension, math problem solving. And I was just beginning to grasp her knowledge of neuroscience. And I said, Barbara, for years, when a parent come in, comes in and tells me my child can't read time on an analog clock, I say, oh, I have an answer. Get a digital clock. Get, they don't need to tell time on an analog clock. And oh man, I wish I could phone the 2000 kids I assessed and apologize to the parents and said, no, no, you shouldn't have listened to me. It was the first sign that your child was gonna have major learning challenges and we should have actually taught them time. But Barbara's uh, methodology is so remarkable. Uh, in terms of motivating kids and, and, and adults to achieve higher and higher levels. But as this exercise in, improves this connectivity of large scale brain networks, which is the magic of this. And we actually saw it live on functional MRI machines. Uh, sorry, Josh. No, great, that's that's great information. Allow me to, to focus a bit more as I listen in to get to You're this. Mastered. <laughs> right? So once you have mastered a level, you've shown that you have understood it at a point where we can move on, you get something like this that comes on the screen, right? That lets you know, okay, you've mastered this, great job, ready to move on, ready to make it more complex, right? This is what our students are going for. This is where the celebration happens. Um, I will be moving on now to more complex levels that will help to bring my brain to an understanding and create a functional connection between my right and the left hemispheres in terms of this activity. Um, and this is kind of the goal that we're working towards. Through this process, we track all of the data. 
online. Like I'm not sitting in a room with 25 kids here as I'm working with another teacher to go around and meet everyone's need. I need some way to know that everyone's working to, to know when they need attention, when they need information. And we have data going nonstop. So on my side, I've got a tablet with all the data coming through, able to change my levels, look at everyone's coming through in, in real time. And we do this by um, this backend system through Aerosmith uh, that has been developed really over the last seven years um, to put this uh, onto the onto the internet with this level, uh, with the data at this level, which is great. And every month we're sending home um, different graphs, showing progress, giving engagement scores, right? Like if your engagement really is everything with this work, like if you register to go to the gym, okay, I'm going to get myself together. I'm going to lose 20 pounds. I'm going to get all this strength. Then I show up at the gym. Um, I'm on my phone in the corner looking up new workout plans. Like, I don't know about this one. I don't know about this one. Like, well, what, what's on Instagram right now, right? Like I'm not getting the most out of it. If I'm showing up twice a week, I'm not getting that much out of it, right? Engagement is everything. You want to be going to the gym and you want to be using the weights, right? You want, you need that level of engagement to really make that change. And that's what we're really tracking within this progress here. So thank you all for watching. Um, Howard and I could talk about this program for hours and hours on end. Uh, so to condense down our, our, our focus into a so far 50 minute presentation um, with you guys is, is um, not the whole picture. So we're happy to meet outside of this and, and give more information. Uh, Sandra as well has provided um, her, her contact here for you to reach out to set in everything up. And our big goal really is improving quality of life, um, making changes that you're seeing on, on your end, either for yourself or your child, uh, to, to live in a world that you feel better about yourself. And um, there's more potential and more opportunities. Uh, so that, that's what we strive for in terms of helping our, our students and uh, as well.